You're listening to Searching for More, a podcast of the Diocese of Arlington. Today we sit down with Nicole Caruso, stylist and author, as she candidly addresses the questions Catholic women ask as they attempt to find a healthy, balanced approach to personal style. Finding a way to represent who you are, represent yourself as a, as a Catholic, as a Christian, someone who follows Christ in a way that dignifies your, your physical body and also the calling that you have and the mission that you've been given by Christ. Hear Nicole talk about how you present yourself to the world as a tool of your vocation with today's host, Amber Rosen, Director of Media Relations, Catholic Diocese of Arlington. Let's jump right in. Nicole, thank you so much for joining us today. We were thrilled to learn that you live in our diocese and then super excited when you said yes to our request to come and be with us. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. It's, it's, I'm super excited for today's podcast because I'm personally interested in what we're talking about. Um, so, so let's go ahead and jump right in. One, you're, uh, for, those, for those listeners who maybe don't know you as well, you're a pretty edgy author <laughs> and you're an entrepreneur and you're a fashion stylist which is amazing i think that's super cool and drum roll a devout catholic <laughs> and i can already hear people going no that's not possible <laughs> um i on the other hand was like okay this is awesome i want to hear i want to hear her philosophy and the philosophy is the genesis of your brand worthy of wearing. Can you talk to us just a little bit about that? I went to your website and I know we talked a little bit before this, but can you tell our listening audience about it? Yes, so worthy of wearing is really, uh, it started out as a conversation on social media with a few girlfriends. So we started using the hashtag. And uh, just to give it a little background, it's really um, came from this idea that a lot of us, especially as women, uh, have things in our closet that we love wearing, but we don't use them often enough. We save them, we keep thinking, oh, I'll just save this for a rainy day, I'll save that for the next wedding I'm going to. When in reality, it's really a showing of, that there's something deeper going on there. Um, just feeling that, you know, my life is too ordinary to wear something beautiful. My vocation is too simple to uh, feel the need to dress up or have a little bit of extra um, style in my day. And so as I, you know, went through my own experience of that examination, I thought, gosh, this is really about not feeling worthy of these things. And as daughters of Christ, uh, made in the image and likeness of God, we are absolutely worthy of radiating his love. And we can That's use beautiful. clothing right. to do yeah. that. And definitely, I mean, those are things I think all of us as women have thought at one time or another, you know, that's a, that's a little bit too much for me or, or even wondered, is it a weakness to care about how I present myself to, my, to the world? You know, uh, is it at odds with my faith to spend any time or even maybe put on makeup or buy something that is a little bit more you know fashionable or makes us or makes us look more fashionable maybe to to the rest of the world is that something that you find women struggle with one and then two only because they're tied together what's the what's the question you hear most often from women in work in working with them and worthy of wearing I think you know we have this idea that if you take um, an extra moment to dress that that is in line with the vice of vanity or mm -hmm. pride or you know that's falling into narcissism and I think we can have a healthy humility and still dignify our body with clothing mm -hmm. that suits our state in life um, you know while also being good stewards of our budget and you know making sure that we're not taking things to extremes but I, I think there is a lesson in being balanced and in finding a way to represent who you are, represent yourself as a, as a Catholic, as a Christian, someone who follows Christ in a way that dignifies your, your physical body and also the calling that you have and the mission that you've been given by Christ. Um, and, and I think the question I get a lot is that is this um, world is this too worldly to right. care? You know, is it too um, is it sinful mm -hmm. to want to look nice? And I just have to you know encourage those listeners that are that are thinking that or wondering that to really bring it to prayer, to bring it to a deeper examination, because we can be prideful and wear sackcloth and ashes, as we hear in you know in stories in scripture. Absolutely. <laughs> and one of the things we were talking to, just to your point, and I loved it. I wrote it down because I thought it was profound. Honestly, you talked about the vanity of not taking care of myself, 
and the thoughts that are there too. So when you're done with this point, if you could kind of go into that, because like a light went on in my head when you said that, I was like, absolutely, that makes such sense. You know, I think when we, you know, put our duties above um, taking care of ourselves, that can often lead to burnout very quickly. And that is not what we're called to do. You know, we need right. to serve from a place of, of um, contentment and, and in Christ. Uh, so I find that when you start to neglect your physical body, you feel it. You feel it day after day. And in order to kind of be rejuvenated, you know, sometimes the simplest thing like a shower can just bring you back to life. <laughs> right. you know? I like that, getting back to the basics. Here. Yes, yes. But it is basic. And I don't want people to, to think that this message is about looking extravagant or trying to keep up with the fashion industry. This is about finding your signature style in a way that authentically represents who you are so that you can just live with more presence of mind. You know, when we can fall into vanity and insecurity, when we keep neglecting ourselves and thinking like, like, oh, that's not for now, that's for later. I need to serve in my mission more. I need to do one more thing on my to-do list. And that's just going to drain us. And then when we are called to be loving and cheerful and have a you know wonderful disposition, it, the people that we're serving are going to notice that we're not being present. Right. And we might be lost in our thoughts thinking about ourselves and how little care we've Which, given. And that's what I thought was so profound. You talk about like in that not caring for yourself, actually spending more time walking around thinking about how I look and what's appropriate to wear and this isn't appropriate to do. And I thought that was really interesting. And there's a lot of truth in that. It had just never occurred to me before. I think the same will be for a lot of women who are listening to this. That was really interesting. Yeah. Um, is it, when you came up with the idea of worthy wearing, I know you talked about, you, you know, you were blogging and stuff and talking with your friends and everything. Did you find this personal struggle as well? Or was it something that you heard from your friends more? This was definitely something I experienced firsthand because I had uh, worked in the fashion industry and worked in uh, worked as a beauty editor in New York in New York <laughs> right before becoming a mother and so um, I found this new sense of joy and fulfillment in becoming a mother but also had this uh, feeling of resistance of like I have this closet full of clothes that I used to wear all the time and now it feels sort of silly to dress up for this you know yeah, like caring for a baby or, mm -hmm. exactly um, and it also felt uh, you know in order to be a good mom. Um, I should uh, never take time for myself because I have to be at the service of my family and my child. And I learned very quickly that that was leading me to burnout, uh, leading me to resentment even of the very vocation that I dreamed of my whole life, which was holding a baby <laughs> in my arms. So um, I found that, you know, creating some boundaries around uh, things that care for myself, like prayer, like getting dressed, like mm -hmm. taking a shower, like sitting down for lunch and not eating over the kitchen sink, uh, really brought more joy to my day and in turn made me much more loving and peaceful and present with my family. That's great. And then when you, you mentioned, you know, dressing and looking appropriate to your vocation, and that's really, I think, something that's at the center of this as well and helpful for women when they think about, um, a, an appropriate balance for the amount of time that they would spend um, on, let's say, getting ready or taking care of yourself, mm -hmm. whatever that means, you know. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that means? So, so looking appropriate to your vocation and the balance that you find there and, and how that enables us, how fashion can be a tool even. It truly is. You know, if you're wearing clothing that makes you feel a little bit confident, makes you feel a little, little bit put together, it really does become a little bit of a mood boost, whether you are working in your home with your family, living an ordinary life, or working in the world, working in business, being called into the public eye. You have to wear things that suit that state in life. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there is a, a, a sort of a tension there that you're not living out the calling that God created you for. So, um, you know, for me, that looks like wearing clothes that I can run after my kids or get down on the floor and chase them right. or clean up the crumbs under the table, you know, things that are comfortable, but also dignifying to my job as a mother. Um, and then that might look different for someone who's working in a corporate office, right. you know, who's a lawyer, who's, you know, showing up to a court each day. Uh, you know, we have to find clothing that suits not only the, the 
what we love and what makes us feel confident and beautiful, but also that suits those contexts that we that we frequent. Absolutely, that makes sense. And then kind of drawing, <clears throat> excuse me, drawing out from that as well. Do you think, and in looking at some of your materials, I think I already know the answer, but do you think that it's even a tool of evangelism when we talk about dressing or looking, it could, again, mean a variety of different things, but looking appropriate to our vocation. Do you think that helps us evangelize more effectively? You know, when while you were saying this, I was thinking of St. John Amola. I don't know if you've seen any pictures of her from the 60s, but she just wore the cutest little outfits. <laughs> you know, and she, you know, we know, we know St. John was a doctor. She was a mother. She, you know, probably often either walked to work or t- took tra- different types of transportation. Right. So, you know, she wore flats, very, very simple, very fr- practical. She wore these adorable little, co- you know, twin set sweaters where she had the little top button and the pretty lace collar sticking out. And um, it was very much significant because it showed, you know, the practicality of being a working mom and also this sort of softness and warmth that she brought with her. Right. Um, and so I love seeing seeing this p- pictures of her because she is, of course, a saint, but she also was a mother and also had this job as a doctor. So it's, it's wonderful to see that and see that it doesn't need to be complicated. We don't need to go and read every magazine and search every designer mm-hmm. runway show to uh, find what our or and our then style it becomes, is, or it threatens to become at least all encompassing. Right. Yeah. Right. And then then we feel that insecurity rise up again because mm-hmm. we're not fitting what the fashion ind- industry is saying is stylish, is trendy, you know, is fashion forward. We're not trying to be fashion forward. We're trying to be um, modern women that, of course, live in the world mm-hmm. but have this Catholic Christian mindset that we are striving for heaven and also trying to bring other souls with us. And how do we do that? Um, it's by being approachable, you right. know, and, and I think we have a duty um, as, as Catholics to be approachable so that others may see us and how we live our life and think, wow, I could do that too. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great point. When we talked about this, you also talk, and this is woven through everything that you post um, and speak about, you also talk about the importance of and the centrality and really starting point of your prayer life. And it's such a Catholic idea, you know, the importance of not just the spiritual, but the spiritual and the physical and the intermingling. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yes. You know, I believe that because style has sort of the fashion industry has sort of taken this authority on what is beautiful, Mm -hmm. um, we need to sort of reclaim that and bring it back to the author of life, the creator of beauty, which is our Lord. And we need to take this to prayer. And I'm not trying to over-spiritualize the message, but I do think it's important to be discerning in, Lord, what are the gifts you gave me? What are you calling me to do? And how are you calling me to live those out? And then who am I? Who did you create me to be? And really inviting him to inform that rather than trying to create an image that doesn't represent who you are. And then again, there's that tension because it's not a harmonious message. Right. And it can Um, become a mask even, something that we hide behind and takes too much of our focus. So like everything else, it sounds like, you know, there's a there's an appropriate balance. Um, and, and you have to discover that for yourself through prayer and discerning as well. Yes, and, and you know, asking our Lord, you know, how he sees you is a wonderful prayer. Like, Lord, let me see myself the way you see me. Because he often looks at us with a more loving gaze than I think we even realize. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> we often have this voice of criticism in our own heart based on, um, you know, maybe some wounds that we have or some, some people that were very, you know, spoke very negatively to us. And we can often think that that's the voice of God when truly he is, you know, we have to discern that. Are we feeling agitated? Are we feeling peaceful? Peaceful. And I think you can find a lot of joy in dressing in a way that's very fluid to who God made you to be, and then using that as a tool, of course, to evangelize and dignify. And reach the, f- the people around you. Yes, because yeah. we're temples of the Holy Spirit, right. you know, so we should dress accordingly. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, one thing, and, and I think you've addressed this a lot already, but just to speak directly to the point, when people think about fashion, they think a high price tag. You know what I mean? And and so that I think that sometimes is where our struggle comes from, too, is we think, you know, as Catholics, we're called to minister to the poor and to meet need around us. 
how can I justify spending money on how I look when there's such great need surrounding me? Can you talk to us about that as well? Absolutely. You know, I think very practically speaking, we have to get dressed every day. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And I think as Americans, we often have excess. We have so much excess. We have more than we need. Most of us do. And it's something to really take to heart. So I encourage um, women in my book to do an edit of your closet. You know, we shouldn't be holding on to things we don't wear or don't use because someone else can use them. Um, And we can have a very open heart in that. You know, creating a signature style is also wonderful because it can help us to sort of weed out these things we've been holding on to that can really bring another person so much joy or provide for a need um, by donating and and things like that. So um, it's good. We have to be good stewards of our finances and good stewards of our material objects and not sort of collect all of this excess in the name of, well, I'm trying to appear relevant, I'm trying to appear stylish, because, (laughs) of course, that would be a misuse of it. So um, trying to be very practical and um, and also very generous by making sure that we aren't holding on to all these extra things and we can let them go and know that they will serve someone else. Okay, I love that. It's super practical. So so getting into actually the very practical side of it, when you talk about doing an edit of your closet, if someone's listening to this and they're like, okay, this makes sense. This is enlightening. This is awesome. And I'm excited. I want to go and do this. Where and how do they start? It, when you talk about an edit of your closet, what does that look like? So for me, it means kind of opening the doors, opening the drawers, um, and looking at the things that do, you do love, that when you wear them, you feel great. Maybe even someone has noticed that you feel great, and they'll say, you look so nice in that. You know, sometimes it's a spouse, or it's a friend, or a parent, and put those to the side. You know, you definitely want to keep those things. And the rest of it, you know, look through the things that are old, that are torn, that are ripped, that are falling apart, and say, okay, maybe this can become my new set of cleaning rags, or, you know, maybe I can donate this to a textile donation, where people use recycled fabrics to make new clothing. Um, And it really comes down to just having a few outfits that are maybe basically is your uniform uh, that are simple so that getting dressed takes way less time. You know, when you can just... see your focus then. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Get up, get dressed, throw it on, and go about your day. Serve in the calling that God made you for. That's fantastic. Okay, so drawing out from that too, you've edited down your closet what would you look for to build that out? Say, okay, now I want to make this more complete. How do you know what you might need then to complete some looks and make a budget and go and get it and kind of be done and move on then? Really have it take less of your time and focus on a daily basis. I think being very intentional in deciding, okay, what is the vision for what I'm going to wear on a weekly basis? And then seeing the holes in your closet. So maybe you've gone through everything, you've got your favorite pieces set aside, and now let's say your favorite black cardigan has a huge hole in it and it's time to, you know, move on. This Um, is the story of my life, by the way, the black (laughs) cardigan story. And I always go for it too, and it's like, where is this one thing that I need? (laughs) Right. So you should probably have two. Yes, exactly right. I know. When one's dirty, you have another clean one. Uh, You know, but that's a great point because the things that we wear all the time, you know, are often in the laundry the most and we're always looking for that black card again. Yeah, exactly. You know, so it's a good thing if that's part of your uniform to have more than one option uh, there. But really looking at, okay, what are the holes in my closet and where do I need to fill those in? And then creating a little list. Okay, this is my to buy list. So next time I'm out, whether I'm going to the Goodwill or Saks Fifth Avenue, I know I'm looking for another black cardigan that, you know, fills that hole. That way, when you're going out shopping, um, and especially as women, I think sometimes we go shopping like as a cultural experience, not so much as a, you know, I have a need that I need to fill. Right. And Um, then you see something and it's on sale (laughs) and you're like, oh, this could work. This could work, right? (laughs) Maybe not. Uh, You know, more often than not, we are, you, you know, buying something because of the price tag and it doesn't fit our style or doesn't fill a need in our closet. And so it truly is just a waste. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's but the thing that sits there. It is. Those are the things that you keep trying on 500 times and you just keep putting back in your right. closet and it's not serving you at all. Um, it can become a distraction. So, you know, being very intentional, knowing what your budget is, and then going to wherever it is that you shop and find those clothes um, and then finding those things to fill in. And it's, I, I really believe it brings so much more freedom. Um, it makes getting dressed much more 
more practical so that we aren't just filling up our closet with everything at the Target clearance rack and then deciding what do I do and then taking so much longer to actually get dressed every day. Right, that makes sense. When we talk about getting ready and and putting together outfits and maybe purchasing a few extra pieces, something that comes up inevitably is the question of modesty, mm-hmm. you know, and and as people of faith, we want to ensure that we're being modest and appropriate in our dress. Um, so my question is is sort of twofold with regard to that. One, what's a question you should ask when you're trying something on to really determine if it is modest? And two, for someone who maybe struggles with that and they know they do, but they have a hard time getting out of it, um, what would you say to them? I think a great question to ask when you're getting dressed is, is this distracting either to myself or to other people or to, or both? Um, because oftentimes when we throw something on and we feel insecure or we're worried about a neckline or we're worried about buttons opening or we're worried about the hem of something, um, that's often an indication that it doesn't fit our body um, or that it's just simply not modest enough. It's not covering our body in a way that's dignifying and it is distracting. So that not only creates this unfortunate experience of you know dressing immodestly but it's also brings about insecurity and brings about that vanity of worrying is this dress going to stay put you know right um so i think modesty i think people forget is a virtue we can ask our lord to increase modesty the way we can ask him lord increase my faith lord increase my modesty that's an excellent point uh and really think about how modesty is not just about the length of your skirt or the width of your top it's really your entire demeanor. It's how you behave. It's how you speak. It's how you dress for the context that you're in. So I love to think of the example, like if you're going to a job interview, are you going to show up in a bathing suit? No. (laughs) Let's hope not. I hope not, people. Uh, You know, but you have to think about these contexts. If we're going to mass, let's wear something that's appropriate and, and gives reverence to our Lord, not only as we show up for him, but shows others how we are showing up for him. Mm-hmm. Um, if we are going to a job interview, let's hope we're wearing something appropriate for that job interview, etc. I mean, if you're going to play volleyball at the beach, then wear something appropriate to wear volleyball at the beach but and be free in that. Right. But know that um, we do such a disservice to the gifts and talents that we have, to our story, to the beautiful things we can share with people when we have this distracting body part or skin that is showing that totally speaks before we even open our mouth, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. This is so great. I love coming back to these. They sound, (laughs) it's one of those things you hear and you're like, well, of course that makes sense, you know, but it's something that we need to tell ourselves and get back to, I think, a lot of us as women in particular, and have comfort in it, you know? Yes, yes. Um, and not spend all of our time thinking on it. So you have a book. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us? It's, it's just come out, right? It just came out last week. Awesome. Um, officially with Sophia Institute Press. It's called Worthy of Wearing. Um, how personal style expresses our feminine genius, which it truly can. And I want to give both the practical tips of how to do that, but also I I really had to include that self-examination of um, where am I called? What is my mission? What are these places that I visit in a a practical, you know, weekly basis? Right. And how do I dress? It's very holistic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Is there anything that you would want to speak to that maybe I didn't ask? Well, I think that, you know, as Catholics, we have sort of lost this idea of Sunday best. I know we touched on it really briefly, but I think, um, you know, we have such a duty as we're all returning to Mass now, especially to show our Lord this reverence um, and in dressing for the Holy Mass in a way that um, shows that we are literally meeting heaven heaven touching earth. Um, And I go into it a little bit in the book, but I just want to invite Um, my fellow Catholics to really dress for our Lord and show him how deeply, um, you know, how how special it is that we get to receive him in the Holy Eucharist. Um, And especially as summer is here and, you know, all of us have sports and we have, you know, different things that we do um, throughout the course of the weekend. Let's make that one day a day that we wear our very best for him. That is a beautiful message and what a nice note to go out on. Thank you so much for joining us. Can you just leave our listeners with um, your website or wherever they can reach you most easily 
online and and get more insight into what you're doing of course so um all of this started on instagram <laughs> on my personal account which is nm caruso and i also have a website nicolemcaruso.com but with the launch of worthy of wearing we have now its own instagram account worthy of wearing and we also have a website worthy of wearing.com that's fantastic lots of places to catch up with you and see what you're up to thank you so much nicole that was wonderful we appreciate it thank you thanks for having me my pleasure you're listening to searching for more If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a review on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Also, make sure you follow the Diocese and the Arlington Catholic Herald on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And subscribe to our YouTube channels for regular videos that inspire, educate, and inform about the Catholic faith in our diocesan community.